Hello, my name is Artur Valerievich and I teach anatomy. And today we're gonna discuss um, lymphatic system, uh, lymphatic vessels, uh, capillaries, uh, nodes, trunks and ducts. And we start from uh, like definition. What is lymphatic system? What is lymph? So lymphatic system it's like a system of uh, these small vessels that are responsible for drainage of lympha. And what is lympha? Lympha, it's fluid that consists of your interstitial fluid with uh, like some debris of cells, with uh, uh, particles of destroyed cells and uh, from uh, also some uh, microns and uh, some and of course water. Where does lympha produced? Lympha actually it's like part of interstitial fluid. If you remember between cells in your tissue there is some fluid, interstitial space, interstitial fluid. And this fluid consists like all these uh, products of lifespan of cells. You know, cells are dying, or they replaced for another, they regenerate in tissues. And when they die, they do not disappear. This, uh, if it's apoptosis, they fall apart on the particles. And uh, these particles are must be drained somewhere, they must be removed somewhere. So the lymphatic system is the way of uh, during age of removing of this like debris, interstitial debris. So everything starts in tissues in uh, interstitial space. So, first of all, lymphatic system are existing in all your tissue, for some exceptions. Like exceptions, it's uh, brain, it's spinal cord, it's cartilages, it's um, eye, internal ear, and uh, organs of immune system. In all other tissues, there is lymphatic capillaries and they produce an Lymph. So everything starts from lymphatic capillaries. It's the smallest uh, vessels. Uh, they will consist of one cell uh, with a big fenestra, with big gaps between them. They are responsible for absorption of this uh, fluid uh, from uh, interstitial space inside these capillaries. These capillaries, they start like in the dead end tubules. Then these capillaries, they join, uh, they have a lot of anastomosis between them, and they create networks. So second like unit of uh, lymphatic system, it's uh, reta lympha capillary. Uh, these networks that uh, have, if you talk about like uh, organs uh, with parenchyma, inside parenchyma, they will create, uh, these networks have 3D dimension uh, structure, if you talk about like flat, uh, like so on fascia, if they situate the fascia or b below fascia, they will have like flat structure. These networks also join and uh, next unit of lymph system, it's uh, actually uh, lymphatic vessels, vasa lymphatids. Uh, lymphatic vessels, you can see them with your eyes and uh, internal layer, middle, external layer and uh, Mm, it have valves. Uh, the main differences of uh, lymph uh, vessels from capillaries, it ha they have valves, valvula, that are responsible actually for moving of lymph into the lymph nodes. So here we come to this uh, part where is immune system are crossed with the uh, lymphatic system, lymph nodes. And you know that lymph nodes, it's like uh, secondary organ of immune system. It have like follicles, where is B cells, it have a paracortical zone, where is T cells, and a trabecula with a sinusoids, where is also B cells. And they responsible for uh, immune answer. You must understand that all lymph must to uh, go through at least one node. Why? Because they act like biological filters and they purify, filter your lymph. If some uh, bacteria, some virus, something will get into the lymph node, lymph vessels, but, and they do, 
in most cases they do because um, they easily spread by uh, lymph uh, vessels and unfortunately also cancer cells spread uh, by uh, lymph uh, vessels and give metastasis into the nodes. So uh, everything that gets into the and the mutant cells also uh, can get into this interstitial space and then into the uh, lymph vessels and then they get into the nodes. And in nodes, in this uh, area of uh, follicles, of uh, paracortical zone, and in sinusoids, this all lympha are checked. It's checked by your immune cells, and uh, if uh, it's okay, it dilate them further into the sinusoid, into portal, and the, uh, they go out. So lymph nodes uh, have like vas afferents that bring lymph into the nodes and vas afferents that bring this lymph out. And then uh, these vas afferents go and further, join with another, join with one more uh, that became bigger, and uh, at least they create, uh, they give beginning to trunks. We have not a lot of, we have only like five lymph trunks, truncus lymphaticus. So here you can see like general skin of uh, lymph trunks and ducts. So first of all, uh, from your head and neck, all lymph is drained into the truncus jugularis, as you can see here. Uh, jugular trunk. Uh, truncus jugularis is uh, created by the, this vas afferens of deep lateral uh, cervical lymph nodes. And it accompany go along with uh, when jugularis internal. That's why it's called uh, truncus jugularis. And truncus jugularis uh, drain uh, lymph from uh, a, co uh, a corresponding half of neck and head. Next one it's truncus uh, subclavius. As you can see it go along with subclavian vein. It's created by efferent vessels of uh, axillary and subclavian lymph nodes. And uh, it's uh, lymph from your upper limb, it's drained into this trunk. The third one, it's here, it's truncus bronchomediastinalis. Bronchomediastinal trunk created by uh, efferent vessels from uh, paratracheal and tracheobronchial lymph nodes and this trunk is responsible for drainage of lymph of internal organs of your thoracic cavity. If we talk about uh, right side, this three trunk as you can see they join and create small duct. It calls ductus lymphaticus dexter. It's right lymphatic duct and, and this duct it's very small. It's like five, three five millimeters and it fall into the venous angle. You remember angulus venosus, it's angle between vena jugularis interna and uh, vena subclavia. The ductus uh, lymphaticus dexter, it's not permanent. It uh, present only in like uh, maximum 20%. In 80% it will be absent. So these three trunks will fall into this uh, venous angle by their own. But what about left side? From the left side we also have this uh, truncus jugularis, truncus subclavius, truncus bronchomediastinalis, and they uh, do not unite, they fall into the present ductus thoracicus. So now we go to ductus thoracicus. Ductus thoracicus is the biggest lymphatic vessel in your body and it originated in your abdominal cavity. So we go to abdominal cavity. It originated on the level like second, uh, for, for second lumbar vertebra from two more trunks. Fourth trunk, it's truncus lumbaris. As you can see, we have truncus lumbaris dexter sinistra in lumbar region that originated from uh, like efferent vessels from lumbar lymphatic nodes. They join and create ductus thoracicus. In some cases, in uh, like about 30 or 40 percent, also we can have one more uh, trunk. It's truncus intestinalis. Intestinal trunk that uh, is uh, drain lymph from only a small intestine. It's also not permanent, it's inconstant, it's uh, present in 30 percent. Here is all your trunks, three trunks uh, that create ductus. Alimphaticus dexter, 
and uh, two more trunk that create ductus thoracicus. So, tor ductus thoracicus, thoracic duct, uh, as you can see, it go, uh, it go upward, uh, go through uh, aortic hiatus in the diaphragm. It's situated uh, first of all to the right from esophagus and aorta and the vertebral column. Then on the level of like five um, uh, thoracic vertebrae, it's declined to the left. Uh, then go behind so the faust and the aorta, go up, then go through apertura thoracica superior, and then turn over your uh, vena brachiocephalic, uh, create this arc, and fall into the left venous angle to angulus uh, venosus sinister between left internal uvular vein and uh, left subclavian vein. And in this place, uh, left uh, jugular, subclavian and broad hemidiastinaris trunk can join it. They can unite with it, uh, they can fall in, in it, or they can just fall into this angle also by their own. Ductus thoracicus, as you can understand, have three parts. So it's abdominal part, pars abdominalis, uh, thoracic part, pars thoracica, and small cervical part, that have like arc and like small descendant part. So in abdominal part, uh, ductus thoracicus in the beginning has small expanding here. That calls cisterna hili, uh, helium cisterna, and that uh, calls so because helium it's like milk. It's uh, translated like milk from Greek, and then it goes through diaphragm. When you breathe, diaphragm you know contracts and it squeezes ductus uh, thoracicus and push lymph further. It has few valves all of course. And then in like cervical part it uh, declines to the left, create arc and fall into angulus uh, venosus sinister. In this place inside the vein, inside the angularis interna there will be also valve that will prevent getting you know, of blood into the ductus thoracicus. I guess uh, that's all, so thank you for your attention, ask questions, subscribe to my channel, and see you later. Peace.